God bless you. This is Dr. Courtney Pope. And once again, you are watching Living Devotions. I am grateful to the Lord for you today. And I am excited, as I always tell you every week, uh, to bring to you this lesson. So we're going to get right into it. But first, let us pray. Get your Bible, you know, contact people and, and definitely get your notepad out because we have three powerful points that are messages all by themselves that will be a blessing to you. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day, God. We thank you for your presence, and we thank you for your power. Lord, we thank you for the way that you deal with your people, how you speak to our hearts, and enlighten our minds, Father, that we may perceive, hear, and understand what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. So, Father, speak to me and speak through me so that he that has an ear to hear will hear. And we pray that your word today will go forth with power and understanding, clarity sealed with the anointing. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's jump right in. Tonight, we're coming from another familiar portion of scripture, but I won't be saying too much of the familiarity to you. So we are coming from the book of Jeremiah chapter 18. Jeremiah chapter 18 and reading um, the first four verses. Let's read Jeremiah 18 and 1. And it reads, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, the potter wrought a work on the wheels. He wrought a work. Now, you know, this is King James language. He wrought a work on the wheels. Verse four, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. Just reading that blesses me today. And I really want to teach a one word topic and it's called reworked reworked. I had I had something behind that, but I'm really not feeling it. And I was searching and searching. I'm just going to go with what the Lord just put in my spirit the first time. Reworked. And there is nothing wrong with you and I living so, so that God can rework what needs to be worked in our lives. Three points we need to share with you. And uh, last lesson was great timing and we want to keep it right there. The first point I want to talk to you about is living in the wrong mold, living in the wrong mold. Too many of us have lived our lives and we live trying to please other people, or live under the image of other people. It, it can be a parent, an uncle, it can be a teacher, a coach, anyone that had influence on our lives. But too many of us have been living our life in the wrong mold. I want to share something with you in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 5. And we're going to look at another scripture in Genesis as well. Genesis chapter 5. Now, while you're turning to that, remember in Genesis chapter 2, uh, the Bible says, And God said, Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. We got it. All right. So after he made man kind, the man Adam was chosen uh, with Eve. They were chosen to be the lead human beings, if you will, to uh, share uh, the responsibility of God's care of the Garden of Eden, uh, essentially of the earth, the planet earth. But in Genesis chapter 5 and verse 1, this is what it says. This is the book of the generations of Adam, or we like to say Adam. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day, uh, in the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made He him. Adam was created in the likeness of God, Genesis five and one. But when we uh, flip over, when you turn the page to Genesis chapter ten, Genesis chapter ten and verse one again, Genesis chapter ten and verse one says, "Now these are the generations." of the sons of Noah, and it begins to list Noah's sons. Now, remember, when Adam was created, mankind as a species was created. But then when Adam and Eve uh, messed up, if you will, fell in the garden, when they transgressed against God in the garden by listening to the voice of the serpent, the Satan through the serpent, when they, when they made that fall, man after that was 
birthed or born in the image of a fallen man. All right. And then we know what happened next. By the time we get to Genesis chapter six, God finds a man by the name of Noah. He says, I have found grace in the sight. Noah have found grace in my eyes. And, he, and God sends a flood after other instructions to Noah and his sons and wipes out civilization on the earth through the great flood. So that when the fl uh, flood waters recede, uh, Noah and his three sons, their three, their three wives and Noah's wife repopulate the earth. So now where it says in Genesis 2, God says, let us make man in our image and after our likeness in Genesis chapter 5 and 1, we, we see where it says, and, and these are the generations of Adam in the day when God made man after his image. But when we, but now by the time we get to Genesis chapter 10, mankind outside of eight people is wiped out and does not exist, but eight people. So these eight people have to repopulate the earth. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 10, it says, now these are the generations of the sons of Noah. So now mankind, where you and I come from originally, of course, from Adam, but we really are the image of grace because Noah found grace in the sight of God. God doesn't just see what's in your present. He also see what's in your future. So he always has a plan to rework or to make something better. That's where we get that's why we say renewed or renewal, revival, rejuvenated, replenished. Uh you go on re R E is the prefix. So it, it means to do again, to make it like it was. So God is always doing something to make us according to his original plan. God is moving you. We have to remember we're talking about living in the wrong mold. We have been living under the wrong mold and, and we blame everything. We go back through the family tree. We go back and blame everybody that we can find to blame. But we have to listen, the choir at Holy Temple when I was a boy used to sing a song said, the failure is not in God, it's in me. So I don't blame God for my flaws and my failures. I run to God because of my flaws and my failures. I lean on God. I call upon the Lord. I run into his presence. I want to be clothed with his name and his power so that I can live in the correct image. God is moving you beyond what you know and moving you to something that's better, to something that is greater. The book of Hebrews tells us clearly that God, there are better things, a better way, a better sacrifice, a better priesthood. It's all better what God has for us in your next phase of living. Because we are talking now, you have survived Corona, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it. You have survived riots and what have you in the streets. You have to believe and live now. Live right now for God's second half of your life. He is reworking us. Hallelujah. We are being reworked. You might as well get there. You might as well get where God is taking you, get where God is leading you, because it's already been predestined. It's already been prepared just for you. The next work, the next work God has for you is better than what you're doing right now. The next work God has for you is so much better than what you're doing right now. So point number one, let's outlive the mold, the wrong mold that we were living in. Take off those shackles. Take off that wrong image, that wrong personality, that wrong persona. And let's really pursue after what God has for us. And that is his likeness and his image. Point number two. Point number two is don't mistake the process for the result. Do not mistake the process for the result. Remember, uh, the prophet Jeremiah was instructed by God to go down to the potter's house and just observe, just notice what the potter is doing. Now, I want, I want to take your attention to the book of Job, the book of Job, because everything I read to you, these uh, uh, subsequent, subsequent scriptures are all supportive scriptures to our main scripture, Jeremiah 18, 1 through 4. In Job chapter 23, Job chapter 23 and verse number nine, Job says uh, on the left hand where God does work, but I cannot behold him. I don't see what he's doing. 
with his left hand. He's working. I see the left hand, but I can't really discern what he is doing. He continues. He hides himself on the right hand that I cannot see him. On the right hand, God is hiding because he's working. He's doing something that I cannot comprehend right now. God is working on the left and I can see his actions, but I don't see the totality of it all because God has a way of working so that our lack of faith or lack of understanding, remember God is infinite. We are finite. He is unlimited. You and I are limited. We think carnally. He is 100% spiritually. So when we think of what God is doing and when he works, God want to make sure he wants to make sure that there is no fleshly interference. He is reworking us. Let him work. So he says in verse, uh, the latter portion of verse nine on the right hand, but I cannot see him. Verse 10, watch verse 10 says, but he knows, but God knows the way that I take. I don't know what he's doing, but he knows what, where I'm going. He knows the way that I take. He knows what the words that come out of my mouth, whether they are of faith or the lack thereof. He knows what's in my heart and he knows what's in my mind. He knows what is operated or fulfilled rather in my flesh, the deeds or the work of the flesh, but he knows the purity and the sincerity, the intention of the heart, even though the work, the flesh may be contrary to my spirit. Verse 10, but he knows the way that I take. When he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Remember, Job was good but he wasn't gold. Hey, God, I thank you. And God wants to move you from your good to, to his gold. Come on now. People have accepted you for good and for your good. And if they couldn't handle your good, honey, just get ready to live in the gold realm. Get ready to live in the gold atmosphere because if they could not understand and handle your good, they really won't be ready for your gold. Gold, however, is acquired. It, it requires a fine taste, a fine eye, and, and everyone cannot afford gold. I'm not talking about that stuff around your neck because all of that's not pure gold. Pure gold, there's no metal involved. Pure gold. Oh, we're going we're gonna to discuss some things and I have to keep this moving. Remember, God, uh, do not, while God is working, do not mistake the process for the result. What you're going through is just the making of you. What God is doing in you is just make, moving you from being good to becoming gold. God chooses people according to the work that will be accomplished by him through them. He chooses you not for your good. He chooses you for the, for the gold standard that you must live by, the gold standard. He chooses you for what will be accomplished through you. It's not about you, but it's all about what's in you. My God, you have to remember you are who you are, but you can't, be, but you can become greater. Yes, you are who you are. You have those genes. You have those traits. I'm going to go further. You even have that history, but he is choosing you for what, for what is in you and for what you are to become, which means that your history is, doesn't have the merit and the weight as much as your destiny does. It's not about your history. It's about your destiny. Say with me, he is reworking me. God is reworking me. Say it again. I am being reworked in the potter's hands. I was good, but God says I can become gold. My God, understand this. You remember when you were younger, and maybe you are a young person watching this. There's a difference between Play-Doh and pliable. Play-Doh is that little clay, that form of clay that we played with as kids and it came in a little uh, canister and then you, you played with it, then you got bored and then the Play-Doh became hard and then you had to really beat it and beat it to try to make it something. But that Play-Doh never really became pliable after it got old and exposed. But to be pliable means you are always the material that has that that yields to the potter's touch you are always soft for the potter to make and to mold you now notice what jeremiah says i observe the potter working a work on the wheels he is sitting there spinning the spinning and spinning the clay 
but the clay was marred while in his hands. It never left the shop. Uh-oh. The clay never left the shop. And something was wrong with the making of it. So we need to talk about this. Now, it's part of the second point. Don't mistake the process for the result. But we need to talk about spinning out of control. God, I thank you. Spinning out of control. And come on, admit it to yourself. No one's listening. I can't hear you as long as you hear me and hear the Holy Ghost. But you have to admit that you have recognized that there's a time in your life when your life has been spinning out of control. You dress up and go to church, but you're spinning out of control. You sit there and go through the motions, but you're spinning out of control. You're saying hallelujah and amen and repeating everything the preacher's telling you to say, but you're spinning out of control. They're prophe I mean, prophesying to you. They give you, God is getting ready to do this. God is going to do that. And I love how some of you just go all out about uh, uh, the Lord told me he's going to do this in your next something you've been praying for and you haven't been praying at all and you know god's gonna give you money and you don't even give in church come on that doesn't sound like god to me it sounds like flesh and god is not flesh so hear this so that your prophetic ear can be open god is reworking you he's allowed the flaws and the failures so that that play-doh can be exposed play-doh gets discarded but was pliable gets remolded. Good God Almighty. Uh, uh, spinning out of control. Our lives keep going and going and going, and we go in motions. We go in circular mo motions. We spin our life in, in revolutions. That's, a, that's going around in a circle. We spin our lives in revolutions. I'm going to read something to you. You are familiar with the scripture in Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. 29 and verse 11. This is what God says. For I know the thoughts. This is what the word of God says. God says in Jeremiah 29 and 11, you already, I'm going to read it for clarity's sake. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. I love what the New Living Translation, how that version uh, ends that. It says to give you hope in the final outcome. So you have to go through some things, but it's not hopeless. Understand that a potter, when you read Jeremiah 29, 11, we understand since a potter is Jeremiah's theme about God, then we understand that before a potter makes anything, before a potter creates anything, he envisions it. Oh God, he envisions it. God already had a vision of you. All you have to do is have faith and believe in God's vision for you. Rework. I want, don't forget that. The rework, rework. I want it to be in your ears, in your spirit. God is reworking me. The potter envisions what he wants to make while he's doing it. You have ever seen a sculpture and that sculpture is made out of stone or something and the pot and the a sculptor is has his tools and it's just chipping away and all you see is a hunk of stone. All you see is a mass of stone. But what the what the sculptor see is an image. You finally see the finished product, but the sculptor already saw it when it was nothing but a shapeless formless hunk of stone. And this is what God sees in you and I. He envisions us for what we can do. All we have to do is believe in it. That's why he says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. You don't see what I see in you. This is what God is saying. But if you can just trust what I see in you and trust my process of work, come on and holler and say, rework me, Lord. Hallelujah. Look at the next thing in, in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, I'm trying to keep it moving. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 49. 1 Corinthians, come on, Pope. Here we are. I'm over there in Romans. I don't know what happened. 1 Corinthians 15 and 49. And the scripture says, Paul says in verse 49, he says, and as we have borne the image of the earthy flesh, as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now, we like to talk about that when we die and go to be with the Lord. When we transition, they bore the image of the earthly. Now they bear the image of the heavenly. But according to Paul's writings, 
We are to bear that image. Now, read it for yourself in the book of Ephesians. We are to put on righteousness and true holiness now. We are to put on the life of Christ now. Walk, Live with the mind of Christ now. So here's what we have to understand. We are born originals, but we end up dying as copies. We end up dying like somebody else. Oh, they sang like so-and-so. Oh, they preached like so-and-so. Mm. But listen, you may not be able to sing like angels and you shouldn't want to. And you may not be able to preach like Paul. You should not want to. You want to have the voice that God have, have designed for your body, for your earth vessel, so that you can accomplish what God has for you to do. Don't try to be like me. I'm not trying to be like you. I'm trying to be like him. That's the one I want to be like Jesus. I want him to rework me. So understand that the potter envisions what he wants to make before he makes it, before anyone else can see it. Two, uh, we are born as originals, but we die as copies. God wants to take you back to your original state before the bad habit, before the addiction, before uh, uh, the, the perversion, before anything that came into your life and redirected you off of the course that God has for you. Before the negative influence, get back to being the original copy. Get back to being the original. And also, don't exaggerate about your life and about your self-worth, but evaluate who you are and what you're all about. The devil wants to mess up your mindset. He wants to mess up your thinking. We talked about this last week. The real battle is right here in your mind. And the enemy wants to mess that up. But I'm here to tell you right now, that what's ahead of you is better than what you have already lived. What's ahead of you is better than what's behind you. I'm approaching my third point, but I need to let you know while we're talking about don't mistake the process for the result. We said uh, we, I, what happens when life is spinning out of control. While you're on the potter's wheel, I want you to get the whole story. While you're on the potter's wheel, the clay, the, the clay is spinning, is being spent while the potter works it. He's working the clay. His wheel, his foot, excuse me, is on the pedal, which controls the speed of the wheel. You can't see my foot going, but I think you saw my body. All right. So the, the foot is working the, the pedal, the, which, which adjusts the speed of the rotation of the wheel. The clay is on it and the potter is using feet to control the motion, the speed, the progress, the process, and the hands are forming the image. The mind has already thought and envisioned. Don't you see this thing? Come on, I holler, rework me, God. So understand this, that while you feel like your life is spinning out of control, there are three types of clay. All clay is not clay. We told you there's the Play-Doh and there's the pliable clay. Pliable means it's soft to the touch. But there is earthen work. There's one form of clay, earthen work. Just allow me just to share this with you because it's information you need to know. It, it makes the lesson just a few minutes longer. But listen, you, you will be better because of the word. There is the, the first type of clay is called earthen work. Or, or excuse me, earthenware. Earthenware. Earthenware uh, contains many minerals. It is uh, it, uh, such as iron. It contains minerals such as iron and oxide, which is really oxide is really rust. Listen at this because all of these can be lessons by themselves. It's It contains minerals such as iron oxide, which is rust. It is also known as a secondary clay because it has many impurities. It's a secondary clay, earthenware. Number two, then there is stoneware. Stoneware is hard and durable. It's a hard and durable clay that is fired to temperatures between 2,100, uh, 2,100 and 2,300 degrees Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit. Can somebody say that's hot? All right. So uh, stoneware is baked, if you will, uh, uh, in, in temperatures between 2100 to 2300 degrees Fahrenheit. It comes in various colors and styles. All right. Comes in various colors and styles. However, it requires more shaping and manipulating than earthenware. 
So it takes more work to make it something of use. There is earthenware, which has too many impurities. Stoneware, which comes in different colors, co comes in different, uh, 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 it's durable. It comes in different colors and, and, and styles, but it has to be manipulated. Then finally, there is uh, kaolin or kaolinite, however you uh, look up the word. That is the third form of clay, kaolin, K-A-O-L-I-N, kaolin. Now, this clay is the purest clay. Come on, get ready. It's the purest clay. It's the closest clay to glass. Wow, that it takes on another form. It's the closest to glass. It is simply called clay because it has few impurities and is the main ingredient used in making porcelain. And you know how beautiful porcelain can be and you also know how expensive porcelain can be. So which clay are you today? Are you the earthen works which have a whole lot of impurities? Are you the stoneware which has to be beaten and manipulated to be useful? Or are you the kaolin which is the form, the, the purest form to glass, which means I'm transparent, it's pure, and it is so, so great in its form. That is how we make porcelain. Good God Almighty. There is a value to your process. So I want to close, I want to close uh, by reading 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 6. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 6. Our first point was living in the wrong mold. Oh, that thing about the Genesis, that, come on, you know that was good. Number two, don't mistake the process for the result. And I, what happens when our life is spinning out of control? You know, that should, be, that should have been a lesson all by itself. And finally, we want to close with you understanding this. Three, you are still in his hands. Hallelujah. Even though you may have been in the wrong mold and even though your life is spinning out of control, you are still in his hands. Even if your vessel have become marred, you are marred in his hands. I know folks want to write you off and send you out of the church and there's never any more redemption for you according to the way they think. But I'm here to let you know what God said in his word. You are still in the potter's hands. Stay on the wheel. It's spinning out of control, so it seems, but stay in the potter's hand. He will speed up the wheel as he sees fit. He will put his hand more into you as he sees fit, but he does not discard or throw to the side what he sees can be of use in his will. In 1 Peter chapter 1 and verses 6 and 7, verse 6 says, Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Verse 7 says that the trial of your faith, the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that uh, perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. You mean to tell me that, Lord, what I'm going through, as long as I stay in your hand, you are shaping me, and the end result is something that's going to bring praise honor and glory to your name. Oh God, then rework my life. I'm staying on the wheel. If that's what it takes, I'm staying in your hands, God. I'm staying right there. Let's stay right there in first Peter, first Peter chapter five and verse number 10, chapter five and verse 10. It says, but the God of all grace who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect. Come on, stay on the wheel. You're in his hands. Make you perfect, establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. My God, you know what that word settle means in this context? It means he's taking you from the wheel to the shelf. He's taking you from the show, from the uh, workplace to the show place. Hallelujah. God is about to put your life on display for his glory. You are being reworked. I told you in the beginning, you have survived 
things over the past several months so that now God can get the glory out of your life. Hallelujah. So that you can be all that you've been praying to be. When you say, Lord, I just want to be used by you. Get the glory out of my life. I daily pray this. When we have pause and pray, that's one of my words to the Lord. Well, at least today it was, Lord, get the glory out of my life. Let my life glorify you. You, He's taking you from the shop to the showroom. You ought to be shouting right there. This is what God is doing in your life. God allows tribulations to what we just read to come before revelation. Sometimes we don't understand why, but God has a word for you. Stay on the wheel. God wants to show you what you're made of. That's the season you're in right now. God is showing you what you're made of. You are being reworked for a greater purpose, reworked for a greater you, reworked to give God greater glory. Stay on the wheel. Stay in the potter's hand. And I want to conclude this, that you will be blessed of the Lord, that you will go forth in the name of Jesus, that you will not faint in your well-doing, that you will seek God in all that he's doing in your life, and that you will never be the same. I close with this scripture. This is my new theme. As I come to you once again from the prophet's cove, bringing you living devotions. I close with this scripture. It's uh, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. And it says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God is reworking your life. You have been broken that you may be perfected. And he has perfected you that you may be presented before men. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you.